After self-studying Korean for four and a half years, there are some questions that I get a lot. Starting with, oh my gosh, can you watch K-dramas without the subtitles and like actually know what they're saying? OMG, do you understand all of BTS's songs? Can you have real conversations in Korean? Oh my gosh, like, are you fluent? I want to answer all these questions for you guys today, so let's get started. Go go! 안녕하세요, 안녕하세요, hey you, it's Italia. And as you guys know, I love encouraging you to believe that you can actually learn Korean, especially through self-study because I learned through self-study. So I felt it was about time to give you a progress update in my Korean abilities because I haven't given you one in like two years. <laughs> so as I mentioned, I have been self-studying for four and a half years now. So it's 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 been a journey and there are some things that I can do in Korean and some things that I cannot, still cannot, do in Korean. The first skill that I'd like to talk about is writing. Yes, my ability to express myself in written Korean. Where is it? Honestly, I don't think that I've improved that much over the past two years in terms of writing. Yes, I learned a ton of new grammar structures. I learned lots and lots of vocabulary. And I do think my sentences have become more natural. But overall, I don't think there's been like a big jump over the past two years. Um, I can definitely text my friends in Korean. I mean, I've been doing that since I started learning Korean, but I have noticed that my academic writing skills are uh, lacking. So as you guys know, I like to study with the Ihua books. And when I read the example sentences in there, my writing is nowhere near that level. Like it's just, uh, <laughs> so writing is definitely something that I'm focusing on now, considering I want to get my master's in Korea. And that means I need to be able to understand academic Korean and write it. For example, I have to take the topic or the test of proficiency in Korean. And that test has you write a persuasive essay on it or a, like a compare and contrast essay. It basically just a really, a uh, difficult essay and I'm not ready for that and I need to be ready for that so that's something that I'm really focusing on right now in order to improve these skills I've been working with an italki tutor which I mentioned to you guys at the beginning of the year she's been giving me essays I write them we go over them together and I have gotten a lot out of that but I think it's still gonna be a long time before I'm like whoo I'm amazing you know what I mean so huh, writing every day great academic not so great Moving on to listening, aka the skill that gets all the questions about the K-pop and the K-dramas. <laughs> In terms of, can I understand K-pop songs and can I watch Korean dramas without the subtitles? I'm about to give you an answer that you're not gonna like. After four and a half years of self-study, it depends. It really, really depends. So, for K-pop songs, I'm a BTS stan, wearing a chimmy shirt, I'm a Hmong bias, I'm J-Hope bias, but I'm wearing a Jimmy shirt, don't judge me. Anyway, BTS songs are literally some of the hardest K-pop songs, at least for me. The level of vocabulary that they use is so high and they have a tendency to write things either in metaphors or very poetically and sometimes it just goes completely over my head. Yeah. But if I listen to songs that were made by, say, GOT7, 17, I'm good. I can get the I can get the majority of the song and not have to look at the lyrics like at all. I can literally listen and understand. But with groups like BTS and EXO and Twice, this this not happening, friend. Sorry. <laughs> In terms of dramas, again, it really really depends on what the drama is about. If it's a crime oriented drama, honestly, I'm not gonna really understand that much. The words are too difficult for me. I don't know what's going on. If it's a basic love story that happens in like a school or something, like I think I can understand maybe half of it without subtitles. And I mean half of it, understand half of it based on simply the dialogue, not watching like the images on the screen because that's a dead giveaway as to what's happening. In terms of actually being able to listen and understand, it's probably only half at best. So no. So listening is actually one of the skills I'm really honing down on right now, especially because I still want to take the topic and listening is its own section and it's one of the sections that I could actually get better at much quicker than the writing. <laughs> so um, there's actually a resource that I've been using to help me with my listening skills and that's this one. So this is Yonsei University's So basically, how do I translate this into English? Basically like an academic Korean listening book. It's meant for those who want to take university classes in Korea, which is something that I would like to do, as I mentioned. 
So this is intermediate one. I'm almost done with it, actually. Basically, the way it works is every unit has a specific goal. So either it wants to teach you to understand introductions or the main idea of something or the conclusion or the thesis, something like that. And all the exercises, which is usually about three or four, are all focused on helping you develop your skills and identifying those areas of the lecture. Moving on to reading, my level of proficiency really varies on what I'm reading, unfortunately. I can understand the reading exercises in my Ihua books. I can understand the reading exercises in my level four Seoul National books. I can understand text messages that are sent to me, honestly, I, I, when I get a new language exchange and we're texting in Korean, I have no problems understanding what they're saying, which is great. So in terms of making friends, I should be okay when it comes to reading, uh, writing and sending text messages. Yay. And I can understand signs, for example, for example, when I'm in Korea, I can read signs on the bus. I can read signs on a store window that says when they're closing. I can understand all those signs, which is great. Things I cannot understand. Children's books. This? This book? Children's books are so hard for me, still. I don't know why they're still so hard for me. They're meant for children and yet the vocabulary is vocabulary that I've never seen before. Yuck. So, although I love reading them, a lot of the time I struggle to um, figure out what they're saying. Some resources that I'm using to help me improve my reading skills are, are you ready for this? Ta -da! You guys have definitely seen this before. This is my Generation Gap book. Basically, it's a collection of cultural essays. I love this. Honestly, I don't think the essays in this are hard at all. It's meant for intermediate to advanced speakers or students, but this is really fun. It's academic Korean. It's honestly, reading this is helping me write better in terms of academic writing. So I love this. And then the other book or resource that I'm using right now for reading is this one. So it's another Yonsei University book. This one is specifically for writing, not writing, what am I saying? Reading. I really like this one as well because like the listening book, it's on a variety of topics. It really tests your understanding of different vocabulary words and figuring out context clues and things like that. So I'm really enjoying it. And our last skill, everybody's favorite, speaking, oh my gosh. Okay, so I want you to turn on your subtitles because I'm gonna talk about this in Korean or I'm going to try. 많은 구독자분들이 제가 한국말로 얘기할 수 있는지 물어보잖아요. 제 대답은 네, 할수 있습니다. 사실 이제 <웃음> 이제 한 시간, 한 시간 정도 한국말로 얘기할 수 있어요. 뭐 제가 아는 주제에 대한 얘기이면 할수 일한 시간 동안 얘기할 수 있어요. 네, 어, 사실 다른 실력보다 말하기 제일 좋아해요. 뭐 왜냐면 한국어를 배우기 시작했을 때 한마디도 할 수가 없었어요. 뭐 오빠 언니 밥 주세요 밖에 한마디도 할수 없었어요. 그래 근데 이제 뭐 아직도 서툴린데 제 생각을 조금 표현할 수 있어요. 그래서 엄청 행복해요. 그리고 한국 갈 때마다 모든 사람이랑 한국말로 얘기하고 싶어요. 어, 미국에 기회가 없었어요. 아, <웃음> 사실 뭐 택시를 탈때그그 그 어떻게 말해주죠? 그 택시 드라이버랑 항상 얘기하고 싶어요. 그래서 아 오늘 고객님이 많이 있었어요? 아니 뭐아그 I don't I don't know 그냥 어떻게 말해주죠? 그냥 중요하지 않은 거에 대한 얘기를 하고 싶어요 항상 뭐 그냥 행복하게 만들어요 그냥 한국말로 얘기하는 게 정말 행복하게 만들어요 Okay, I don't know what else I should say without like fangirling or something but yeah, speaking in Korean makes me really really happy and I like it because I feel like it has it's shown me the most progress like yes I'm a lot better at reading than I was when I first started, obviously. Yes, I'm a lot better at li my listening skills. Yes, I'm a lot better at my writing skills compared to not knowing anything, but I feel like speaking is the way that you really connect with people. And so the fact that I can speak in Korean for an hour um, makes me really, really happy. Like, yes, I am making a lot of mistakes. 
Yes, my sentences probably sound awkward and maybe someone's giggling about the way that I just worded something or the fact that I mispronounced a word, but it makes me really, really happy. And so, uh, do I wish I was better after four and a half years? Yes, but I'm pretty happy with where I am, so. Yeah, anyway, you guys know how I was talking about being afraid to speak. So if you are also trying to speak Korean and you're a little afraid because you're shy or introverted or just scared, um, I actually made a video about this uh, right here where I tell you how I overcame that like mental block or mind block that was keeping me from improving my speaking skills. So definitely go check that out. And I will link all these books down in the description box for you if you want to check them out as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Come bye, bye, you guys. Bye.